Hello, my name is Jack Dulles, Director of Training from Tulsa Welding School. And today we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of 6010. Now today we're going to run a little bit different of a video. Usually I show you a video, you know, from all the way out and talking about it. But today I'm actually going to show you a 2G, okay? But what we're going to do on today on the 2G, I know the 2G, you've got it in a fixed position. But today I'm going to weld from quarter to quarter. And I'm going to, the first half of the quarters, when I run from quarter to quarter, I'm going to show you all the wrong things. I see this happen a lot of times in the school where, you know, uh, the guy's having a problem running the 6010. He's wanting to know why he's getting a big keyhole or why he's losing the battle and it's rolling in on the bottom. Uh, so we're going to go through that today. So the first half, I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to mess up the first, first half. I'm going to talk you through it. As I'm doing it, I'm going to explain what I'm doing in there. And so where then, if you're having these things that are happening to you, maybe you're long arcing or maybe you're dragging it on the bottom, uh, whatever these cases are, then maybe I can help you out today. So what we'll do, like I said, is the first half from quarter to quarter and quarter to quarter, I'm going to do nothing but mess it up. I'm going to talk to you the whole time. Then what we'll do is we'll spin it around and I'll run you the rest of the half all the right way and I'll talk to you about it as we do that. So. Like I say, we'll go through. I've taken my pipe, I've already tacked it up. I've, right here I run a 1 8 land with a 1 8 gap. That's what I like to run. You may like to run a 332 with 332 land or whatever it is that you like to do. That's your decision. But what I like is a 1 8 land with a 1 8 gap. I've went ahead and done that. I've prepped up, I've cleaned my bevel. I've cleaned the inside of my pipe as well. Uh, I haven't cleaned the outside, but on this one we're just gonna be talking about the roots. So I didn't worry about cleaning up the outside, but you should clean up the outside as well. So the inside's been cleaned. The outside. I've got it all tacked, all ground, all cleaned up basically. And so today I want to just show you kind of the do's and don'ts of 6010. So we're going to get started here in just a second. Like I say, the first half is all your errors. And so you want to watch closely as we do these. You want to see if you're having some of these issues, I think I can help you with them today. And if not, you can always stop by the school and I'll be glad to run some with you and, and help you out. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I highly recommend that you practice on plate before you try it on pipe. But like I say, let's go through some of the things. First, I'm going to show you long arcing. It is the number one reason people have problems with 6010. I see it all the time. People are long arcing their rod. What is long arcing your rod? Basically, it is where you are not keeping your rod close to the weld. You have now gotten it farther away. That's why they call it long arcing. You have not kept your rod close. So you want to keep your 6010 very close the whole time. You're practically a rubbing on the bevel. If you see fire and sparks and all this stuff coming back out on the outside, then it's telling you to push your rod in. So keep your rod in. I'm going to walk you through this. I'm going to show you what long arcing does and how it makes a bigger mess and only creates bigger keyholes and more problems for you. The second problem that people have is they whip their 6010. What do I mean by whip your 6010? Okay, so in most of the most of the time you're moving it up and down, or maybe you're moving it side to side. Instead of doing that, you're calling it whipping it. You're flaring it out. And so as you do this, you know, or if it's up and down and you're doing it like this, then what you're doing is you're basically ripping away the metal in front of you, creating a keyhole, a bigger keyhole, causing you more problems. So I'm going to go through some of those today. I'm going to show you exactly what's going to happen as you do those, and so where you can see what it looks like. And then we'll talk about another dip, uh, errors that people make, and then I'll show you all the right way. So this is all going to be wrong. Okay, You don't want to do these types of things. If you're doing these, you need to fix them. First is going to be long arcing. All right. We've run in a 1 8 60 10. I'm running it on 75 to 80 amps. And like I say, that's a pretty good amperage as far as if you got a 1 8 land and 1 8 gap. Okay, let's make a mess. All right, first is long arcing. So you got it up in there, you got it kind of tight. You're doing good. You see, now this is long arcing. Look how it's all splatters going everywhere. I'm working it. I'm trying to get it going, but I've got this fire just coming out, ripping it open. This is not good. You don't want a long arc like this. This is flaring it. This is not good. You can see how I'm just eating away the keyhole. I'm trying to keep it going, but I've got it long arcing and flaring it out. And these are all bad things. You don't want to do this kind of stuff.
And this is some of the results you have when you do long arcing and flaring it. You can clearly see that I have it filled up way too much. You can see that it's not even inside the groove. And I've also got holes in it. So this is what's happening. It's called long arcing. Once again, it is where you are keeping your rod. I'll explain again to my hand or maybe here, I'll even hold it to the pipe so you can see. It's not keeping the rod in there nice and tight. It is, it is walking it too far away. Yep, so it's too far away. You don't want to keep it away. You want to be rubbing on the bevel at all times. Keep it in there nice and tight at all times as you're moving around. Do you have to step it? Not all the time. You can drag it, yes. If you have a nice gap and a nice land, you can drag it. I'm going to show you some of that on when we do the right side, the other side. Um, but right now, I just want to show you all the wrong things, okay? So this is long arcing. You can see the results on here. It is not good. Keyholes. Uh, I'll show you the inside in a minute and just show you what the problems are. Next big problem that people have is when they weld it is their angles, okay? As you're going along, maybe you're keeping it in there nice and tight. A lot of times people bury it up in there, but the problem is they'll favor either the bottom usually, it's usually not the top, but they'll have it stuck in there so tight because they won't, don't want to long arc it. But what they do is they keep it in so tight that they favor the bottom and it just eats all the bottom bevel away. And ultimately it rolls all in and you get a big old beer belly on the inside. So these are other things that you don't want to do. So like I say, I'll go through uh, bearing in my rod in and favor in one side and I'll show you that as we do that on this rod here. These are all the things you don't want to do. Okay, ready buddy? Yep. You got it in there, you're going pretty good. You're running a nice little bead. You're trying to keep it nice and tight but you got it buried down on the bottom beveled edge where you're not fusing to the top because you got it on the bottom edge. And you can see, oh, I gotta come back and fix it. I got a problem. Oh, let me fix it. Oh, okay, I'm, go oh, I'm down on the bottom. Oh, let me come back and fix it. You know what I mean? You can't have it favoring the bottom like that. And it creates these big keyholes. Next thing I see is people, all oh, they wanna come back. When they come back to touch the puddle, they wanna come back and hit it. You know, you're coming back and hitting it. It's not good. You don't have to come back and hit it. You know, you just got to give it a little love, just a little tap and keep it going. But you can see I've got a big old keyhole and it stems from me staying too much on the bottom. So this is, oh, and then it sticks like that and that happens. So these are all things you don't want to do. You don't want to stick it like that neither. That's not good. Run you a little bit more here. You can see it on the, look at the pipe, look at the groove here. Look at the bead in here. Look how I'm favoring all on the bottom. Look at my beveled edge. You know, it's filling all up on the bottom, not so much up on the top. Look how it's ate away all on the down here. Uh, like I say, these are not good things, okay? You don't want to do this type of stuff. If you're having these types of problems, this, this is what you're doing. You're favoring the bottom. You've got it buried in there. You're trying to do the right thing by keeping it tight, but you're favoring the bottom way too much. It's eating down on the bottom and it's creating a big keyhole and only causing you more problems. Like I said, if you see, you see fire and smoke all on the outside, you see all the uh, sp spatter all on the outside of the pipe, it's telling you that you're long arcing, you're flaring it. These are some of the issues that I see constantly here at this school. Uh, also, you know, people want to come back and they want to press on the bevel entirely too hard. And you come back and they're trying to shove back on this thing and stepping and whipping in the heck out of it. It doesn't have to be all that way. Okay, you can be nice and smooth, take your time. Last thing I'm gonna show you here is obviously is just uh, going too slow and going too fast. You know, that's, I see that as well. So a lot of times people just hang in there too long. They're trying to do the right thing. They're keeping it in there tight. They're trying to not long arc it, but they just go too slow and it just ends up falling in on the inside or vice versa. They're going too fast. They're trying to just get it done real, real quick and then it goes too fast. And you don't get any penetration. So one last time to show you some errors and then we'll do it the right way, okay? Let me spin it so where you can see it a little bit better. Well, I can see it a little bit better. Okay, can y'all see it? All right, this is going to be keeping it in tight, trying to do the right thing, but going a little too slow.
All right, too fast. When you're doing all this movement like this, you just open up for errors. This is too much. You know, you shouldn't have to whip it and move it like this. This is entirely too much. As you can see, we have done nothing but made a mess with this piece of pipe. That's all we've done. <laughs> if you look at it, look at all the problems that we've had uh, in here. I've shown you multiple examples of errors. First, we talked about long arcing in there. Then we talked about your angles being off. Then we talked about going too slow and going too fast. All these things lead to ultimately a failure of your weld. And so, uh, like I say, we need to try to avoid these. If you're having these types of problems, there's definitely the ways we can fix them. I'm gonna spin the pipe around and try to show you a nice good way of fixing all these, running them nice and smooth, keep a nice and smooth, consistent at rod angle, travel speed, and arc length, okay? So let's spin it around and I'll show you the rest. We're gonna run these here from tack to tack. I'm gonna run them all good. I'm gonna keep it in tight and do all the right things. So far, so good. All right, let's run a good bead. Here we go. Okay, nice and smooth, nice and bead in there. You can tell it's all up in there nice and tight, a little bit better. You can see the results, it's in there better. You don't see all the smoke and sparks. I mean, I'm gonna rotate it back just so you can see. There's this one, and look at the difference. You can see there's clearly a difference. Look at this one, look where we have long arcing. Over here, you can tell, look how it's filled out all on the bottom. As you spin it around, you can see we've kept it in there nice and tight, and it's burning in good. Uh, like I said, you don't see all the smoke and all the sparks all over the place. That's how you want to do it. You want to keep it nice and tight. All right. One more time. Let's show you one more time. Then we'll be done here. Good. All right. And here I'm going to try to keep it a little tighter. Just run a little drag for you. Last time I did a little step in there, sometimes you gotta step it, you know, when the keyhole gets a little bit bigger, you gotta just step away from it a little bit, let it cool down. I'm keeping that rod in there nice and tight. That keeps the heat down, keeps it from great, making a real big keyhole. Okay, and that was called a step technique. Okay, so like I say, we're stepping it in there. There's also a drag technique. As honestly, as long as you're keeping the keyhole under control, it doesn't matter if you step it or if you drag it, that's entirely up to you. It's all about reading that keyhole. That, that keyhole is the key to all of it, uh, understanding about making sure you're getting good times. So keep that keyhole small, keep it uniform, keep it round, 
and uh, you'll be able to run some good beads. If you need some help or assistance, please reach out to Tulsa Welding School. We'll be glad to help you. If you need some uh, help with 6010, you can stop by the school. I'll be glad to help you. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something today and be looking forward to talking to you and watching, seeing you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. If you would like to get some more tips and tricks and become a better welder, then subscribe to our channel. And if you would like to learn even more right now, then click on our link. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.